Bubble Bobble is one of the most fascinating relics of the early NES era. A game so intelligently yet uniquely crafted, it's one of the few titles of the Golden Age that hasn't aged today. Mechanics can become old, ideas can become expanded upon, systems can become rigid, future installments can make an original antiquated, but not Bubble Bobble. Over 30 years later, Bubble Bobble remains one of the most pure, enjoyable, and friendship-building game experiences of all time. Bubble Bobble is very much structured as a classic arcade game. You take control of the cutest hero on the NES, Bub, or his twin brother, Bob, to bubble-spitting dinosaurs who like to bobble around. Your goal is to get through the perilous Cave of Monsters, a 100-screen gauntlet of various challenges, and rescue your girlfriends and maybe become human again or something, it's not important. Each screen is perfectly stationary, Bub and Bob being able to see everything a level has to offer right from the get-go. Their mission is to take down every enemy, trapping them in bubbles and then popping them with the spikes on their back before moving on to the next screen. Repeat 98 times, slay the fearsome SUPER DRUNK at the end, and beat the game. It's a startlingly simple game, but one that's infinitely inviting. Monsters spawn by dropping from the top of the screen, or flickering into existence in the arcade original, giving Bub and Bob a few seconds where they can just wander around the level, get their bearings, and figure out what they want to do before the action starts up. While not all of the enemies move at the same speed, they all fall at the same speed. And this falling speed is considerably slower than in other platformers. Bub and Bob, therefore, have a relaxed time figuring out the optimal way of taking on a group of enemies. Better yet, enemies can only be finished off by the spikes on Bub and Bob's backs, or by jumping on top of them. Hitting bubbled enemies from the front just pushes them around. This lets the dinos group up a whole bunch of enemies and take them all out in one big swoop, scoring a ton of bonus points to earn the extra lives they need to get through the cave. But they can't take too long, or else the monsters will break out of the bubbles and be angry and faster. Or worse, they'll summon the Spirit of Death to hunt the dinosaurs down until they can escape to the next room. It's a great balancing act of figuring out a level, trying to master movement through it, and having just enough pressure so the player doesn't get carried away with trying to break the game over their knee. But Bubble Bobble's greatest success is its focus on cooperative gameplay. Very few games of its era were cooperative, often having players take turns trying to beat a level in pure competition, or having something like Balloon Fight where cooperation was possible, but difficult because players can easily bump into one another and make each other fall to their deaths. Bubble Bobble doesn't have that. Bub and Bob can't do anything more than pop each other's bubbles. The experience is based entirely on cooperation, one player never too far ahead of the other so that they can both have a steady supply of lives. Little bonus games challenge players to collect medals and other objects, suddenly pitting them against each other for nothing more than extra points and bragging rights, and to give them a reprieve from the cave. You can even take lives from your partner through the pause menu in order to try to give your team the best chance of finishing an action that requires deliberately pausing the game and figuring out what you want to do, rather than just snatching a stock thoughtlessly. And of course, the game isn't even beatable with one player, saying, Bad end! This is not a true ending! Try again with your friend! If Bub goes it alone. Beating Bubble Bobble requires two players to come together, figure out the best way to handle each level, and have a blast helping each other. So, Bubble Bobble Revolution eliminates all of those good things about it, and it sucks. The screen's too small to show a full level, requiring scrolling and making planning your route through a level way harder, even in the direct emulation of the arcade game, which did not have this problem. You take three hits to kill rather than one to make up for this, which makes cheap enemy placement more abundant. 
You need two game carts in order to play with a friend, so the co-op element that the original touted is discouraged. The redesigns are... Oh my god, what is that? And level 30? Oh, level 30. Due to a programming error by the localization team, one that does not exist in the Japanese and European versions, and did not need localizing, I might add, the boss of level 30 will not spawn. Bub is just stuck waiting forever. 29% of the way through a game that was released to audiences for full price. People bought one-third of a game with no fix. It's the most thoughtless reimagining possible for a game with such thoughtful and ahead-of-its-time design. Many games are criticized for not being playtested enough, but here's a level that was undeniably not playtested even once. Just... Ugh. Replacement copies were issued with Rainbow Islands attached as an apology, but too little too late. Level 30 already made the game into the butt of a joke. It's how you design for carelessness. What a waste.